The audio and all other media materials aired on this broadcast station does not necessarily reflect the opinion of the management of Rama Word Broadcasting, Rama Gospel Radio Incorporated, KOER LPFM, its affiliates, and or the staff and volunteers of these entities. Please direct all correspondence to the appropriate company's website and or business address. Get ready. You're about to enter the D Suite with Cheryl Lacey Donovan, where we're dedicated to delivering your purpose, your vision, and your legacy one person at a time. It's the D Suite, where the D stands for delivery. And now, here's your host, Cheryl Lacey Donovan. Hello, 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 and welcome, everybody, to the D Suite. I am your host, Cheryl Lacey Donovan, and the D stands for delivery, where we are delivering vision, we're delivering passion, we're delivering legacy, one person at a time. And we are so happy to have you join us here on KOER 101.5 FM in Cypress, Texas. Yes, that's Rima Gospel Radio, where we're bringing the gospel heat to the streets. And we want to invite you to join us by downloading the app. If you'd like to from iTunes or from TuneIn, it's the Rima Gospel Radio app. Or you can listen on your computers at www.remagospelradio.com. We also want to welcome all of our viewers that are viewing us live on Facebook Live right now. I see all of you out there. Marsha Duffield, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Chastity, I see you, babe. Thank you. And you know what? It's not even a beat, girl. Ah, how about that? Brenda Reed, thank you so much, you and Divine Jams, for providing us with our um the person that we'll be interviewing today, the artist, uh, gospel recording artist, Palmir. She has actually joined us here before, and we are excited to have her back here with us on today. She's going to be sharing with us about her uh, new project that she's been working on recently. So I guess without further ado, what we'll go ahead and do is bring on the, our artist, gospel artist, Palmir. Palmir, hey, how are you today? Hi, Cheryl. I'm doing fabulous now that I'm talking to you. I'm so excited and happy to be back at the D-Suite. Yes, ma'am. to all your listeners, I'm happy to be back. Hi, guys. Listen, we are so excited to have you, and I know that you have been really working hard on this new project. I know the last time that we spoke, um, you were in the process of getting everything together and and creating the single and all of that. What has that process been like for you? Well, it's it's been an amazing journey, and you know, as um, you know, most of the times our listeners they just get to hear the song, the product, the finished product. They don't really know what goes into. Um, this is a really nice question because they don't really get to know what goes into recording the song itself. Mm-hmm. Um, my last project, which you introduced, um, went on and did pretty well. It charted. So now with this new one. Um, I, I struggled a little with the recording, to tell you the truth, because um, this one was much more emotional. Um, it's mm-hmm. The title of the song, He Took Care of Me, um, this was a personal story. And I remember getting in the booth, um, it was very hard. And even the sound engineer kept stopping and lo- looking at me and asking me what's going on, because it was so hard. Um, um, the words, when, when I was supposed to sing them, it, they would bring back memories, and, wow. and I would just stop. It was very hard for me to record that song. Um, and I remember even Ray at my uh, label, Divine Gems, when he heard it, um, he did give me some advice, also things that I needed to go back and retweak. Usually artists sometimes don't, because you know, what it, with, with the recording and the time, the studio and the money and all that. 
And you know what? I had to go back and, and redo the song and make sure that things were done properly so that the message would come out the way that it should. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was different because this, this is a song that's very personal to me. So, you know, I know that um, even when you are writing books, the same thing can happen. It tends to be very cathartic. It brings back things that you have yeah. experienced in your life. And one of the things for me, though, is that as you put pen to paper, and I'm sure with you, as you put words to the songs, it also reminds you, and I think it's so overwhelming because it does this, it reminds you of where God has brought you from. It yeah. reminds you of, of the, you know, when you yeah. were in that place, you thought that you would never be able to get out of yeah. that place. You thought that yeah. it was a place that you were going to always be in. And then when you look back at it and then try yeah. to write a book about it or try to talk about it and recognize, oh my God, God brought me out of that. Yeah. That is a whole different level of understanding about who God is. Yeah. Um, just, just having, I'm naturally a grateful person, um, not just with God, but just even with people around me. I'm very grateful and thankful. So this song, just sitting in my car, um, and <laughs> I'm in New York. So in New York, you get on the train, you get on the bus. It's like so easy. Mm-hmm. Um, th- those years when I was going to school, I was in college, and those were years where I was alone by myself. I had to figure it out on my own for the first time because mm-hmm. I've always been mommy and daddy's little girl. So I remember I was doing three boroughs per day, going to Queens, Brooklyn, in Manhattan all in one day. I don't know if wow. you've ever been to New York. I have several that, times, so I do understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my day every single day. Wow. And I remember one night going back home after work because I had to be on the train for, for like an hour. Mm-hmm. And then this guy who was getting off at the same stop as me proceeded to stealing this lady's bag to run out of the train. And it was the exact same stop. Somebody punched him in the face, and then he still got out and kept walking. And then I was getting off right behind this guy, and I was, like, just praying in my heart. Mm -hmm. It was, like, 11 p.m., and the streets were dark. Wow. And he was making the same turn that I was making, Mm -hmm. and I knew who he was because he was just stealing somebody's bag right in front of me. Mm -hmm. So, and sure enough, God made him make a left turn, and I proceeded to walking. And then years later after this happened, I just sat in my car one day. I was just so amazed. I'm like, I actually have a car now. Even still wow. now, when I get in my car, I get emotional because mm-hmm. I, I know that at, at any given point, this car can be taken away from me because I have it because of God, mm-hmm. not because of the money that I make, not because I'm working, because God has been good to me. So it's not just by my efforts. Mm-hmm. So I'm just grateful just getting in the car. And I was just sitting in the car just thinking about those years and and. My 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 um my commute every day going from Queens to Long, uh, to to Manhattan to Brooklyn all in one day, and now my commute is so much easier, and I don't have to be worried about these things and being attacked and mm-hmm. and being alone in the streets. All I gotta do now is just get in my car and then start it, and then I'm where I'm supposed to be in like thirty fifteen minutes. Mm-hmm. So I was just thinking about it, and I'm like, wow, like all these years and. I kept thinking that I was doing this on my own, but no, Mm -hmm. God was watching over me. That's why I never got hurt. That's why nothing ever happened to me. That's why I was able to just wake up every day and have the energy to go through something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, just thinking about how, how I was able to feed myself. Because my parents at the time were not giving me any money, mm-hmm. you know, and I was just making, I remember at the time, 525 working at Dwayne Reed part time because I was going to school full time and I had to pay my rent and I had to figure out how to still be able because I was working part time, 525 an hour. That's like four hours a day. Um, it wasn't much. So thinking about how did I pay my rent? How did I how was I able mm-hmm. to feed myself? And I'm like, wow, it, it was really all because of God, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know? And and then just the word started coming to me. I'm like, he took care of me, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And, and, and there were days where I, like, I didn't know. I didn't know what I was going to do, but he took care of me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and the words just came naturally, and I started writing them. It, it was just a song of gratitude. Yeah. You know, this wasn't me asking God for something else. One more thing. No, wow. this was me saying, God, yeah, you did it for me. It was you. 
You know, it, gives it wasn't you, easy, but you did it for me. It gives you a different understanding of protecting you from dangers seen and unseen. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, Cheryl, if I tell you the stuff that I have seen on the train, like it would be so inappropriate for me to even say mm -hmm. the things that I've seen getting off the train before, mm -hmm. you know, um, the insanity, the corruption. Wow. Um, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Things that I've seen, I can't, I won't even repeat on the air. Because yeah. it's just, yeah, it's just not, not, not worth it. But I'm glad that God protected me um, from all of that. And here I am today, like giving him praise mm -hmm. um, on a national level or a global level. Because now with the internet, anybody can hear the song anywhere. Exactly. Um, but that's, yeah, that's just me telling my story. Mm -hmm. what, it, it was not easy, Cheryl, I'll tell you, it was not easy. You know, yeah, I remember I, am I remember years ago when I uh, first purchased my home. First of all, I, I was relatively young in the grand scheme of things. I think I was only 20, 22, 23. And it was amazing even how this uh, this opportunity came about. I, um, I had yeah. been I had made up in my mind that I wanted my, my boys to grow up in a community, not just in an apartment complex. Not that there's anything wrong mm -hmm. with an apartment complex, but I wanted them yeah. to grow up with a, with a house and with a backyard yeah. and to be able to play basketball in the yard and have a community community of friends that they were able to play with and do things we go to school with on a regular basis. And I just made up in my mind that I was going to do that. Now, I don't mind sharing that my credit was jacked up. You know, I, I was one of those individuals that when you got into college and they started sending you yeah. all of those credit card things, yeah. every, every credit card yeah. thing they sent, I said, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> then, you know, had no idea I was going to pay for any of those. Yeah. So by the time this yeah. opportunity came around, you know, it, it wasn't it wasn't really looking good. I had no idea mm -hmm. how I was mm -hmm. going to, to pay for a home or any of that. Mm -hmm. I just knew that this is what I had in my heart, and I knew that, you know, I just was going to trust God to make that happen. And I'm yeah. like you. You know, when we talk about now what the what the minimum wage and stuff was back then you know making 525 an hour six dollars an hour that was a lot back then you know uh yeah. but that was kind of what minimum wage was and i just yeah. just made it a point that i was going to go out and i was going to uh somehow get a home yeah. for us to be in so i went and put yeah. earnest money on this place and what have you still didn't really know how i was going to make that happen and uh sure yeah. enough one day i drove up to my mom's house and the guy that owned the home next door it was on our public housing um roster or whatever and the person that lived in it had had pretty much trashed it i mean it was it really was was bad inside uh, from what what the, the things that we heard about it she was barbecuing inside and different things like that long story short the guy finally said, told my mom when he recognized that I was trying to purchase a home. He said, "We're well, here. Here's what we can do. We'll. Uh, I want to sell it anyway. We'll get give it to you. No earnest mm -hmm. money. No money down. Oh, Take it as Amen. is. You just pay. Amen. You know, start paying the. You know, the the yeah. the mortgage yeah. on it, whatever, on a finance. And bam, there it was. Yeah. And and I, I know." that that was nobody but God. Yeah. I wasn't necessarily yeah. old enough to purchase a house at the time. I didn't have the credit to purchase a house at the time. Yeah. Didn't really have the money. And it was it was such a reasonable amount to pay at the yeah. time that it was, I, I know in my heart, nobody but God. So I understand when we say God took care of me. I understand yeah. what that looks like and what that, and you know, years later, you know, different little things that would happen. We we had an incident where um, uh -huh. the, the uh, uh, what do you call that? Taxes. I had no idea you were supposed to pay housing tax. I ain't know. I, you know, I, this is my first time buying a house. Nobody told me that we were supposed to be yeah. paying taxes. And, yeah. and what yeah. was happening, they had been sending all the information to the guy that owned the house. So for the oh. years that I owned old taxes, I didn't know. And they were coming oh. after me for that. And I was like, okay, now how, what am I supposed to do with this? And if I tell you, and to this day, I think I know who the person was, but I, I'm not sure that I know who the person yeah, was, yeah. but they sent me a check for oh, the wow. amount that I needed. I think I had $50 left over to pay off that Amen. tax debt. So God took care Amen. of me. I know yes, what that God looks like. Really. I can testify to that. So I, I'm, I'm grateful that you have, like you said, put out this particular uh, single that, that, that God took care of you, to, just not even to ask him for anything, because if he never does anything else, he's already done enough, oh, and I yes. believe that. And it's, it's just yes. been, it's truly a blessing 
to trust him and just, you know, when he puts yeah. that unction in your spirit to step out on faith and obedience and yeah. recognize that he, if he's given you that vision, he will make the provision. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I'm glad you, you've you shared um, um, what you've been through because I, I can't imagine with not paying the taxes on your house and then finding out after the amount of pressure, the pressure mm-hmm. and the stress alone that this would put on you, mm-hmm. you know. So, but yes, but when, well, as Christian, like you said, stepping out in faith, mm-hmm. so stepping out, you know, and a lot of people are just afraid of doing that. But mm-hmm. <laughs> as Christians, you know, that that's what we have to do. Absolutely. To tell you the truth, all, all the stuff that we, we get, we get ourselves and wrap, wrapped into and in, in being stressed out and, and no, there's really no need for it. If you're stepping out in faith, if, if you're trusting that God's got your back, mm-hmm. there's no having to really worry about anything. And this is how I've decided to live my life from now on. Like, I'm just not going to. Cheryl, recently someone gave me a ticket and it was so unfair the way that it was given to me. I tell you, I thought, OK, should I go and fight it? Everybody was like, yeah, you just need to go and fight it. But just something in me. Mm-hmm told me that I didn't need to. I said, you know what, I'm just going to pay for it. I started thinking about it. I'm like, the headache of having to find parking, mm-hmm. go to the courthouse. I'm saying, I, I can't deal with that. It's only $45. I'll just pay for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Guess what? I went, researched the ticket to pay online. Wow. And it wasn't there. <laughs> was deleted. See? I said, no, 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 no. I said, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> I said, let me, let me search through my plate. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put my plate number. And it says, wow. uh, there are no violations. Wow. Okay, under this plate. Seriously. And I was willing to pay it, knowing that it wasn't fair, knowing that I could have just, you know, taken the time to go out and fight it and tell the judge but then I was like, you know what? I'll just, I'll just let this one go. Wow! And he, he took care of it. He took care of it. Hey, I believe that every time. I have no doubt in my mind when we get and and you know when we say that sometimes I know people believe that this is a lot easier said than done, and it is. It is. It depends on yeah. what is is yeah. going on at the time. That's true. But but what that's why it says to cast down those vain imaginations and the things that that ro- yeah. come up against what the Word of God says. Because it, it, the reason that that's in there is because we are going to have those thoughts. We are going to have yeah. those moments where we believe that yeah. okay, God, are you listening? Okay, God, are you yeah. with me? Are you really with me? Are you really here? Are you really working yeah. this out on my yeah. behalf and in my favor? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. Now it may not. Have happen in the yeah, time frame right. that you would like to see it happen yeah, yeah. but you understand that at the end of the day God is working it out for your favor all things work together for your good and having said yeah. that it doesn't mean that all of the things are going to be good but it does mean that those things that are yeah. happening are at the end of the day going to be worked out in your favor if, if nothing else they're going to teach you how to get on your knees and on your face before God and in his presence and begin to pray just in case your prayer life has gotten a little slack maybe some of this stuff is occurring because yeah. you need to get back in God's face and get back in his presence so you know there are there are all kinds of reasons for why certain uh, uh, circumstances or God allows certain circumstances to occur in our lives. Yeah. But at the end of the mm-hmm. day, we have to recognize that he, he will never leave us and he will never forsake us no matter how bad it gets, no matter how yeah. bad it looks. You know, he, he is going to make sure that mm-hmm. it works out in our favor. And I just want to remind all of our listeners today that we are speaking with Palmyra. She has a brand new release that is out entitled, He Took Care of Me. You're listening to Rima Gospel Radio, K-O-E-R 101.5 FM in Cypress, Texas, where we're bringing the gospel heat to the streets. And we will be back in just a moment. Mm Mm-hmm.
You felt the burden of this world crushing onto you. Trust me, I know the pain you felt. The many days alone, I know how it feels to be hurting inside. Hear me when I say I know what it's like. Cause I Welcome back, everybody. That was Palmyra Seraphine and her newest English release, He Took Care of Me. She's actually in rotation here at 101.5 KOERFM, Rima Gospel Radio in Cypress, Texas. And we are so glad to have her back here today. She is currently on the roster at Divine Jams Gospel Network, where she released her first English project, You Better Know What Time It Is, in October of 2018. In the first week of a national radio airplay campaign, the song hit three. Three separate DRT global top airplay charts, and I know exactly why. Y'all, this girl can sing. He Took Care of Me will be Palmyra's second English release, which she wrote in her car a few years ago as an anthem and of gratitude of how God kept her safe during a lonely time in New York City. And we are so glad to have Palmyra back. Hey, Palmyra. Yes, I shall. <laughs> I'm just listening to the song again. You know, I was I was just thinking about, you know, the entire process. And like you were like you were saying earlier, it's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. um, those those moments were moments where you know I I, I didn't pray. I didn't have the courage to pray. I, I was so lonely. Um, I, I kind of lost it. You know, and so hopefully our, our listeners, maybe somebody who's going through the same thing right now can kind of connect and understand, you know, that if he's done it for me, he can do it for you too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this is the whole point of, of, of sharing my truth, sharing these stories. Um, it's, it's to get our listeners, your listeners, to um, connect yeah. and understand that you're not alone. You know, that's the whole point. You're, you're not alone in this uh, particular moment. Mm -hmm. You know, you may think that you're the only person going through this right now, but no, I went through it myself. You know, I've, I've probably gotten out of it before you, mm -hmm. but, you know, it, it's not going to be forever. Whatever lonely moment that you're going through right now or whatever mountain that, that, that's like in your way right now, it, it's not forever. And, you know, I think that's one of the biggest uh, tricks of the enemy is to make us believe that we are the only one. 
that's going through yeah. the situation or to make us believe that, you know, you're the only one that was silly enough or crazy enough yeah. to, to get involved in that situation or to make that mistake or to make that poor choice or decision uh, to the point where, you know, you, you, you feel like you're all alone. Like there's nobody else there. Like there's nobody else that, that has ever gone through what you've been going through. And, and the reality is that that's just not the case. That's just not the case. No. no. And, and when you just look around, you know, there are people going through way worse. You mm -hmm. know, I used to at first, I was when, when I was younger, I used to chase, want to chase, you know, money, money, money. What are, mm -hmm. What's the way for me to better my life? Because somehow we seem to equate money with success and right. happiness right and i know it's so cheesy because we hear it all the time it's not true but when you're actually in the position where you're actually seeing that oh mm -hmm. it's really not true you can be very comfortable and have the money but if if you don't have your health right you know if if you because yeah, i've learned now to really appreciate my health yes the, just a little bit of energy you know that that i have like ray will tell you uh, my my um radio promoter at Divine Gems, my label. He's seen videos of me online where I'm, like, performing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the energy that it takes to do that kind of stuff on stage. Right. You know? If I'm not healthy and I don't have the strength, then I can't do it. So mm -hmm. I've learned now to, like, really appreciate the fact mm -hmm. that I'm not in the hospital, you know? Appreciate the fact that I don't have to battle certain things that others, yeah, I may have my other stress and other things that I'm dealing with, but just thinking about it and seeing that, wow, really, what I'm calling my worst is really not the worst. Exactly. You know? If you don't believe that, you can look at all of the people that have committed suicide, that have, have oh. millions and millions of dollars, but, you know, at the end of the day, they're still lonely, they're still sad, they're still oh, depressed, yeah. or you can ask somebody that's a millionaire or a multimillionaire that has a, an uncurable cancer. You know, would they yeah. rather have that multi-million dollars or would they rather mm -hmm. be cured of the cancer? And I'm sure the answer would be that they would rather be cured of the cancer. So yeah. you're right. We need to uh, to put make our priorities straight. We need to recognize the things that are really of value in our lives. And once we do that, I think it would take a, a heavy load off of our shoulders because we can stop trying to keep up with certain people and, 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 and trying to be other people and kind of stay in our lane and do what God has you know ordained for us to do you know even in even in the the kingdom and the christian christian communities when i hear people that say things like you know they want to have a mega church or they want to be like that no mm. be like who mm. god has created you to be don't despise mm -hmm. small beginnings there is a reason why you're mm -hmm. beginning there you don't know what types of issues these people are having to deal with mm -hmm. in order to maintain those mega churches you don't know mm -hmm. what they've had to do in order to get mm -hmm. those mega churches so you just better be glad and grateful with what god has um, given to you to do and yeah. know that he will bless that and he will give the increase yeah. Yeah. as you are obedient to what he has ordained for your life. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, I'm glad you've said that because in terms of a uh, plan, he has a different plan for each one of us. Exactly. And those plans, they don't just seem, they, they don't, it doesn't just seem to happen. I'm not just talking to you right now. Mm -hmm. uh, God already knew that I would be on the radio mm -hmm. talking mm -hmm. to you today, mm -hmm. you know? It's nothing that I've done, but, but of course, I mean, he's been guiding. There are certain things that you have to pay attention to. You've got to do your part, you know. But he already knows what the plan is for your life. So you cannot just look at someone else and, and expect to have their life. Because if you had their life, maybe you wouldn't be able to handle it. God right. probably made them in a way where they can handle whatever's going on. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? So it, it all comes down to... God's plan, you know, stepping out in faith when necessary, when you have to. And also even always, you know, you can't, you can't just decide to just lead your own life because God is already leading it for you, mm -hmm. you know. And just, and just in those tough moments, just the moments where, you, where you're feeling like you're, you're lonely, that it, you're on your own, you know, losing, you, losing a friend. I, mean, I, I didn't even know how hard it was. <laughs> losing someone until I lost my uncle two years ago. Like, yes, I, 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 
I've seen people cry. I get it. But when it happens to you, it's different. Mm -hmm. That's when you're actually in the shoes of the person who's lost someone before you. And now you truly understand, oh, my gosh, it's, it's really hard. Mm-hmm. You know, because losing my uncle was really tough. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about my father. I'm talking about my uncle. Right. And it really took a toll on me, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. So just just losing someone, losing your job, you know, not knowing where your next meal is going to come from. You know, these are things that we face every single day. Every By, by the hour, people are facing these things. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes it, does, it doesn't hit you right now because you're not going through it. You know, but when I stop for a second, I'm like, oh, yeah, I've been there. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can understand you. I got it. You know, and hopefully releasing a song like this, it's, it's, it's a reminder or maybe cheering to cheer people and encourage people, you know, to understand that, you know, it's not forever. <laughs> I think that I think that one of the things that you said a few mi- minutes ago that really resonated with me was um, l- l- allowing God to lead our lives as opposed to us trying to lead our lives. Again, something that's easier said than done. But I do know yeah. that when we follow the leading of the spirit that's inside of us, it definitely makes the road a lot easier to follow because, you know, everybody, I've, everybody has said, oh, something, something told me not to do that. Or they might come back and say, oh, something told me that I should have done that. And I'm like, yeah, something did tell you. That's that spirit of God on the inside yes. of you that's trying to help lead yes. you the way that you need to go. But a lot of times we ignore it or act like we didn't, we didn't uh, hear it yes. or feel it. And then we wonder why we find ourselves in some of these crazy situations. Yes, yes. You, you just, just like I told you with, with that ticket. Mm-hmm. I knew in my heart, like, Something told me, don't go to the judge, don't go, don't go away, and, and I, I listen. And I think a lot of times, Cheryl, people don't know how to recognize God's voice. You know, um, mm-hmm. I actually read a book on that, how to recognize when he talks to you. I feel like there's a, a lot of people who don't really know when God is talking to them. Mm-hmm. They, it, it, it's probably not that they're just ignoring the voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they probably just don't know yeah. that it's God talking to them. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. Maybe I should think of a song for that one. <laughs> that, may, that may be. No, remember, it was birth right here on the D Suite. Don't forget that. Delivery, that's what we do. We're delivering a song yeah. now. <laughs> but, yeah, I agree with you. I just, um, I just, we, my um, mentoring group just finished a book last month uh, entitled Discerning God's Voices by Priscilla Shira. Yeah, awesome. And And same thing. I, I agree with you that sometimes I think people don't recognize uh, yeah. when God is speaking to them. That's why it's so important for us to do everything that we can to maintain that, uh, that relationship with him so that we do uh-huh. recognize his voice when we hear it, that we don't uh-huh. uh, go off willy-nilly just because something comes into our mind and believe uh-huh. it's him yeah. and it's not him. So that, that's the importance yeah. of that connection. Anytime that you want to have a relationship with anybody, whether that's with you know, a significant other or with friends or with family, yeah. it's always important to spend time with them to get to know them and their character so that when they do call your name, you know exactly who it is. That's just like, you know, being a mom. When my kids call mm-hmm. me, I don't care who else is out there saying mama, when mm-hmm. one of mine calls me, I know exactly you know who it is. Yeah. I know ex- yeah. that it was yeah. my child that called me. And and I remember uh, studying about the sheep and the shepherds. And, you know, back in, in biblical times, there could be hundreds of sheep out in the pasture. Mm-hmm. And there could be four or five shepherds that, that are out there. But when the, sh- the one shepherd that may have only owned 10 of the 100, when when he called for his mm-hmm. sheep, his sheep knew his voice. The other 90 yeah. stayed out in the pasture, yeah. and only the 10 that belonged to him came to him. And that's one of the things that we do have Powerful. to get get very, very, um, uh, get more in tune with and more, more intentional about yeah. is developing that kind of relationship with God that when he speaks, yeah. it is undeniable who it is that yeah. is speaking to us. it should be you know um so just recognizing god's voice because i think a a lot of times people are thinking well maybe it's just my my inner 
voice. Right. Maybe it's just my conscious. But I think another way of probably solving this is also when praying. I feel like when I pray that this is always part of my mm-hmm. prayer. Mm-hmm. God, I need your Holy Spirit, you know, to, to give me guidance. You know, Mm -hmm. I need to know, please teach me to recognize your voice. Mm -hmm. Teach me to be able to know your voice. You know, because, yeah, I mean, it's it's not that hard talking to God and asking him Mm -hmm. to help you recognize his voice. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I think that's another way also, you know, praying about it. Like if if you if you get the first, it it takes the reflection. That's Mm -hmm. number one. Mm -hmm. You would probably have to make a few mistakes and realize, oh, I didn't listen the first time. Right. You know, that was him talking to me. First, recognize that, oh, you're not listening. You're not recognizing the voice. Mm -hmm. And then ask him to help you recognize. And and here's the thing, you know, yes, prayer is absolutely important, but it should not be a monologue. It should be a dialogue. And I think that that's the piece that that we're missing. We may pray, Mm -hmm. but do we really take enough time and spend enough time to listen for him and his response? You know, we get on our knees real quick and we say, oh, Lord, thank you. And, you know, I need you to do this and I need you to do it this way at this time. And this is how I want it. But we never really spend enough time with him where we're actually meditating and and basking in his presence and in his word and worshiping him and and creating an atmosphere where he can Mm -hmm. respond to the requests Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. we've made. And I think that that, Mm -hmm. that's a part of it as well. Yeah, we pray. A lot of people pray. But are you actually sitting and allowing him an opportunity? Opportunity to respond and answer to that prayer and then when he yeah. answers despite of what it looks like because now here's the other piece of that sometimes the answer that he gives us mm-hmm. is not necessarily the answer that we yeah, wanted so we or the answer that we expected yeah. so are we willing to have enough faith to recognize that when he answers even yeah. if it's not the answer that we were seeking yeah, yes, that yes. we still move forward and we still do what we're supposed to do and are obedient to that the, the answers that he's given us because that's that's another piece of it as well you know some of us may have have received the answer and he may have given us all of the million signs that we're looking for but we don't mm-hmm. want to receive it because that's not the answer we wanted that's not how he wanted we wanted him to bless us that's not how we wanted him mm-hmm. to to provide for us mm-hmm. uh, rather than understanding that you know if, if it was something that we could do ourselves or if it was going to look like exactly what we wanted it to look like then that's not faith we, we probably we could have done that on our own. We could have picked that joker yeah. that we picked on our yeah. own when God is saying, no, that's not the one for you, though. And that's why we end up, you know, repeating those errors because when he when he told us the one that really was for us, he didn't yeah. look like that list, uh, right? Didn't look like that yeah. list that we gave him. So now I don't, yeah, no, Lord, let me, I'm going to go back over here right then, and I need you, and I need you to fix that, right? <laughs> yeah, you know what? What you just said about the response, you know, because cause I think sometimes also uh, we choose to, even when God gives the response, to probably just go with the response that we wanted. Like, you just reminded me just now. Like, I have a, 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 a young lady who called me recently complaining about a friend of mine, a male friend of mine, that she started dating. You know, things didn't go well. So she called and started complaining, hoping that I would be able to... Um, uh, be in the middle and helping things work out. Mm. And then she told me that she prayed about it. Wow. And yeah, I started thinking, is the response that God gave you? Because seriously, I would not have ever dated my friend myself. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Right, I right. right. Made, I would not have made that choice myself. Right. Let alone if God would actually tell me that this is the chosen one. So. And I'm thinking to myself, what was the response? And not that I'm thinking, I don't think she ever told me what the response was. Hmm. I think she just decided that this is what she wanted. Mm -hmm. She prayed about it, and she's going to go for it. Right. You know? Right. So I think that that's a very important piece of puzzle, waiting for that response. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and being obedient when the response comes. Because, again, sometimes you get the response 
but that wasn't the response you were expecting. So you go ahead and do your own thing and say, okay, God, I'm going to go do this. I just need you to bless it. And that's not always the way that it happens. Everybody, we're yeah. speaking with Palmyra Sarah Finn. She is currently on the roster of Divine Jams Gospel Network. You are listening to the D Suite on Remo Gospel Radio, KOER 101.5 FM in Cypress, Texas, where we're bringing the gospel heat to the streets. We'll be back in just a moment. Your passions just keep in mind your own damnation. You think this life is yours, your ego is a Just look around and see your blessings. You'll realize that it's God's mercy. The D Suite. I'm your host, Cheryl Lacey Donovan, and we are speaking to Palmir Serafin, who is currently on the roster of Divine Jams Gospel Radio Network. I want to remind you that you're listening to Rima Gospel Radio, K O E R 101.5 FM in Cypress, Texas. You can listen in your car on 101.5 FM. You can download the app on iTunes and tune in, or you can listen on your computer at www.rimagospelradio.com. We are bringing the gospel heat to the streets. And Palmyra, this has been a wonderful, wonderful um, session today. I have enjoyed having you. Uh, Just so you guys know, that was her first English release that came out October of 2018. You better know what time it is. Palmyra, do you have any last words that you'd like to leave with our listeners before you go today? Yes. Um, First of all, I just want to thank you, Cheryl. I felt like this morning I wasn't just talking to the radio host. I was talking to my sister and Christ. Yes, like, girl. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, but it felt so natural. We were having a conversation in my kitchen. Yes. So, yeah, so hopefully our, our listeners, I don't know whoever's going through a tough time right now, hopefully this conversation is shedding some light 
bringing deliverance to someone listening right now because, you know, this is the D suite. Um, and then I want to give a shout out to my uh, to, to Brenda um, Ray at Divine Gems and my label Divine Gems for um, uh, helping me with getting this opportunity to be on the air. So thank you so much. You are so welcome. Listen, we had uh, someone that wanted to ask a question. We know that you mm -hmm. are currently in New York, but where are you originally from? Um, so I was born in New York, um, but my parents are from mm -hmm. Haiti. So I was fortunate enough to, uh, earlier on, to move back to Haiti as a baby, to stay there with my parents. So I ended up going to school there, uh, which uh, was, I think, a really good experience because I, I get to have an idea of what it's like to be in another country, mm -hmm. uh, to see things uh, from a different light. And I speak uh, Creole. Mm. And I also speak um, French, fluent French, because they're different. I think sometimes people tend to like, uh, mix them. They're mm -hmm. not the same. I can't just go to Paris and start using Creoles. Right. <laughs> They'll look at me like, what? <laughs> Maybe one word I'll say is very similar, because mm -hmm. um, people call it also broken French. Also, mm. I, because but I think they are, it's a mixture of, of different things, I think, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so, um, so, yeah, so... And then I came back here when I was uh, 14, 15. I finished high school okay. and then went to school. I mean, I don't know if the person asked me all this information no, but now, but I'm giving you. But. <laughs> no, but that's great. That's great. We, we love to have it. We but love I, to I have guess, it. Yeah. I guess they're trying to know me a little better. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I ended up going to school. Um, I was a pre-law student at first because I wanted to be a lawyer. Okay. Um, then I, in those moments that I was alone, uh, I was like, uh, three years, three more years of law school. I just want to work. So I ended up started subbing, and mm. then somehow they started pressuring me. Well, if you're gonna keep doing this, you might as well become a teacher. Wow. I was like, okay, I'll go for my master's. So I did that, and I'm still um, an educator right now when I'm not on stage um, on the weekend. So what is that? So what is that like for you? Where you know, kind of separating those two areas of your life, oh, being yeah. educated one minute and, and like a celebrity the next minute. Yes, and I'm so <laughs> happy also that I'm not a music teacher. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm like, I think of it like on occasion, sometimes when they have assemblies, they would ask me to sing the Star Sprinkle Banner. When, when depending on different things going on, I would have to sing and the kids, oh my gosh, they go crazy. Uh, and then they let everyone know all the time, oh my gosh, did you see on YouTube? It's, it's the worst thing that could happen when the kids suddenly discover that I'm on YouTube. Wow. And they tell the ones. Yeah, and then you have the older generations who are seniors selling the ninth graders, you know. Um, yeah, but I'm <laughs> able to separate it because I guess it, it's a personality thing because I won't say anything unless it comes out. Um, uh, I don't know. Sometimes people would just discover maybe because I would say something and then they go and they research and then they find right. me. Right. Yeah. So I, I keep it on the down low. I do. Yeah. I, I have ways of doing that. So, you know, uh, I, 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 run a, I run across the same thing, too, because I teach, uh, I teach college students. I'm an educator as well. And it's, um, it's the same see? thing. They, they, once There's they, common. exactly. Once they Google <laughs> And they, I'm like, oh, uh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay, then <laughs> it's a whole different dynamic that yes, goes on yes, as a result of that. So you try oh, not to yes, say too is. much, you know, to them or whatever. Yeah, but, I don't, I don't. <laughs> so it has been amazing speaking with you today. Go ahead and let our listeners know how they can connect with you. Yeah, connecting with me is a very easy um, on Facebook, uh, Palmyre, P-A-L-M-Y-R-E, Seraphim. It's like the angels in the Bible, S-E-R-A-P-H-I-N. Um, I'm also on Instagram. I'm still working on getting my Instagram page together. That Instagram um, is different. Then, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then also um, Divine Gems, certainly. It's very easy to get to me through my label, Divine Gems. Um, I'm on all social media networks. It's easy. There's not. It's just me. Even if you misspell my name, it'll, it'll come up once you research it. It's two syllable, pal, mayor. Okay. Um, Okay, well, thank you, Pamela, so much for joining us here today. It has been a pleasure.
Thank you, Cheryl. Absolutely. You Talk All to right. you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Everybody, that was Paramir Serafin. She is with Divine Gems Network. Make sure you get out there and find out about what she's what she's doing, uh, the things that she has coming up. She has a beautiful voice. Her songs are amazing. I think this new one is going to be out really, really soon, so make sure to connect with her. We also want to remind you that you connect, can connect with me on all of the social media platforms at Cheryl Speaks Now. Cheryl is spelled with a C. You can visit my website. We are doing some new things over there, CherylSpeaks.org, so make sure you uh, remain in contact with me and find out the fun stuff that we're doing over there. Uh, we have a women's retreat, a women's retreat, retreat restore her uh, the movement, the experience is coming this year, and our very first event, our launch event, is the retreat that we're having June 14th through 16th. You can find out more about that on Facebook, and uh, we just a lot of amazing things going on right now, and we're just grateful that we're able to share it here with you uh, today. You can reach out to me also on email, Cheryl at Cheryl Speaks. Dot org. And yes, I will answer. It has been great uh, talking to you today here on the D-Suite at Remo Gospel Radio. I want to remind you to catch us here every Saturday at 11 a.m. Um, and I think that's all I have to say. Thank all of you for joining me on Facebook Live. Thank all of you for joining me here on the radio broadcast. It has been real. Remember, as always, that God can do exceedingly and abundantly more than you could ever ask or think according to the power that works in you. Be blessed. Thank you for listening to the D Suite with Cheryl Lacey Donovan. If you like our show and want to know more about us, check out www.cherylspeaks.org. And don't forget to join us every Sunday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on KOER LP 101.5 FM. Or you may download the free TuneIn Radio app from your app store. Search for KOER 101.5 FM. See you next week. KOERLP 101.5 FM, Cypress, Texas. KOERLP 101.5 FM, Cypress, Texas.